Greetings all. Well, I've been paying attention to the weather forecasts. I've been paying attention to my wet cat too. Yeah. Yeah, poor Gracie. Gracie got stuck in the rain. She was out walking around looking for stuff. And all of a sudden, the cloud burst opened up. Huh? Yeah, it did. But she heard me start the camera up and she says, uh oh. Bill's doing a video. Uh, I guess I better go over and see what he's doing, right? Right, Carol? She's such a good kid. For quite a while, um, I've been hearing from people that with the weather changing, <laughs> that, well, now we're going to be able to grow lemons in Seattle, you know. And, uh, well, I don't think so. You get two years worth of lemons in Seattle, and then the Douglas firs get frost damage. Yeah, that's. I, I do believe what we're in for is that at one point we had some fairly regular, fairly mild, mellow weather for the last couple of hundred years here. Things are changing, and uh, when they change, I'm afraid what's going to happen is it's going to become erratic incredibly erratic um, I mean, take a look at the at the images of snow around the Hollywood sign now that is really unusual and that does harken back to 8990 I was in the Bay Area during that period and uh, boy we froze off things the jade plants froze the bougainvilleas froze lemon trees froze lime trees froze uh, killed my Mexican limes uh, killed a bunch of my cherimoyas it just, it got really, really cold. Things that we kind of took for granted that we could grow around there. We couldn't grow them anymore, you know, because it just got so cold. But then things went back to normal for a while. And you can take a look right now and you see up there in the, in the northern tier of the U.S. We're having horrendous ice storms and freezes and it's really, 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 really cold. But then just south of a line, you know, around St. Louis and that, what do you see? You got extremely warm temperatures, 15 to 20 degrees above average. Um, and I heard one of the weathermen say, Al Roker, uh, yeah, he said that uh, the trees are budding. Now, see, when you talk about it warming up and being able to grow tropical crops in temperate areas, when the oak trees bud out during February, you know, in southern Illinois, you know it's going to freeze again before May comes around. And so you're going to get in a situation where even your native plants are going to be taking a hit. Things that have been, you know, adapted to culture there since the last ice age. And... Uh, and uh, they're, they're, they may, you know, get hit hard this year. It's not going to kill them off, but it's going to be hard on them. Uh, I am forever advocating that when you're growing crops to produce food, that the crops that are the most perfectly adapted to the area you live in are the right ones. Right, Gracie? You want to get down? Okay. She says, mice are perfect. Yes, they're the perfect crop. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're in Michigan, well, you know, apples, pie, cherries, pears, things like that, you know, it's uh, you know, down there in Florida, obviously, you know, citrus is king, <laughs> queen, whatever you want to say about it. But there are some crops that in certain niche grow almost perfectly and don't require a lot of human intervention. There are others that you will be working your living fanny off to try to make anything happen from them at all. Uh, those are the ones I call space station gardening. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sooner or later there will be a moon base and on the moon base we'll be doing that sort of gardening where you're going to have to create everything from the air to the liquids to the fertilizers you know the soils everything will have to be made uh, to get it to happen and one leak in the dome the tomatoes <laughs> are all dead <laughs> it's like that yeah yeah here where i live there are some crops um, 
they just so perfectly adapted there's hardly any problems with them whatsoever um, obviously pineapples are pretty good around here you know I think everything's got a bugaboo there's always going to be something going after it used to be coffee was a pretty good one here but it's not so good anymore too many diseases too many bugs on coffee uh, well it's not a food crop per se but hibiscus plants when I put them in the ground around here they act just like native stuff yeah they they don't really require a whole lot of fertilizer or attention from me other than periodic pruning to keep them looking nice and I some things I could just work and work and work and work and get absolutely nothing for them. Potatoes is a, a, an example. On the other hand, sweet potatoes are rampant. You know, taro obviously is a traditional carb here in the islands and so on. We have alternatives to the potato, but you know, it's almost impossible because the disease is here in Pune to get that thing to grow. It really isn't worth the effort. Uh, so some things are very very well adapted to where you live and other things are not and as the weather starts getting like it is here where it's really being wacky it's you know really being unusual um i think you're gonna find that it's gonna be difficult even at times to grow apples in michigan let alone trying to raise bananas in new york you know so have fun with your you know garden experimental projects it's always fun i love messing with things uh, that, that don't necessarily make sense but take a look at what is it that really raises well where you live because the real story here is food it's sustainability it's survival we're heading into an era of time where survival can get to be more challenging than it was in the past recently. Okay, so I'd think about that. <laughs> All right, folks.